Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at how to rationalize a denominator. Um, and we are only going to be doing like the first stages of this rationalizing in a denominator, just what you might find in an Algebra 1 class. All right, um, there is more to this, and you'll get to that um, multiplying by a conjugate um, in an Algebra 2 class. All right, but for starters here, we'll start out with just the basic idea. All right, let's suppose we're dealing with our radicals, and we've got something like 2 over square root of 5. All right, and that would be our maybe our, say, our final answer after we had simplified something. All right, there is a rule that says we cannot have that uh, radical in the bottom, and so we need to get rid of it. Um, when this is just a single number over here, um, I can choose to multiply by a form of 1, and I will choose whatever that denominator is. All right, so it is square root of 5, so I'm going to choose to multiply by square root of 5 over the square root of 5. All right, anything over itself is always 1, so I'm multiplying by 1. I'm not changing this at all. All right, now the reason I chose to do that is because then this denominator right here simplifies really, really easy and gets rid of the radical. Um, you're going to want to be able to just do this in your head, but for demonstration purposes here, a square root of a 5 times a square root of 5. All right, well, we can multiply, multiply radicals and get a square root of 25. Well, that turns out to be a perfect square every time, which gives us an answer of just 5. So choosing to multiply by the exact same denominator with the radical there will give us the number underneath the radical. Okay, this is why and how that is true. All right, you do not want to have to write this out every time. Okay, so then simplifying here, multiplying across the top, I'm going to have a 2 radical 5. And then on the bottom, radical 5 times radical 5, the radicals go away. It's left with just a 5. Okay, so we have now rationalized the denominator. In other words, gotten rid of that radical that is in the denominator. Okay, so for our second example here, we've got square root of 7 over the square root of 8x. All right, now I could, again, choose to multiply by the square root of 8x over the square root of 8x. Although when I do that, 8 times 7 on the top there is going to give me a 56. If you choose to do that, then you're going to have more work that you have to do for yourself because if that numerator can be simplified with that radical, you would need to do it. So on this one, my suggestion is to ask yourself, okay, I've got square root of 8. Is there a perfect square that's really, really close to 8 that I could choose to multiply by that's going to make that radical fall out on the bottom? Okay, and there is. 8 times 2 is 16. Square root of 16 is a perfect square root. So I'm going to choose to multiply by the square root of 2, and then I do want that x to fall out as well, so I'm going to do square root of x. All right, square root of 2x over square root of 2x. All right, and to begin with, it may be hard to come up with what you're going to multiply by, but again, you can see it's a form of 1. All right, now, when I multiply those denominators, I'm going to have square root of 16x squared, both of which are perfect squares, and that's what I want. All right, so let's do the top there. I'm going to have the square root of a 14x. All right, on the bottom, I'm going to have 8 times 2 is 16, and then x squared. So square root of 16x squared. All right, now that numerator is already as simplified as it can get. Square root of 14x is as small as it can get. So I have no further work to do on that. And now this is a perfect square, so I can do just a plain 4x there. All right, everything is in lowest terms. So if you can come up with the form of 1 that you want to multiply, which causes that denominator to become a perfect square root, all right, and make it the smallest perfect square root that you can come up with, then you know your numerator is already going to be in, in like the simplest form. All right, so again, taking a look at maybe this third example here, we've got square root of 5 over the square root of 18x. All right, so after square root of 18, what's the next perfect square that you can find? All right, and I believe in this case it's going to be a 36. So if I take 18 times 2, that's going to give me my 36. All right, and since I have a single x there, I'm going to want to put an x underneath there also. So I'm going to, again, multiply by the square root of 2x over the square root of 2x. All right, a form of 1, so I'm not altering the equation here. All right, uh, multiplying across the top, you're going to have the square root of 10x. And then multiplying across the bottom there, 18 times 2 is 36 x squared, square root of that, all right, which is a perfect square. Simplifying then, my numerator stays the same, square root of 10x, that denominator goes to a 6x. Again, I am in simplest form because I chose to multiply by a form of 1 
which made a perfect square, the smallest perfect square, after 18 that I could come up with. Alright, so uh, three short little examples of how you might rationalize a denominator in an Algebra 1 class. Um, if you like the video, I'd really like for you to hit the like button down in the corner. Thanks.